All right, folks. Andrew Pika here, drummer for the Andy Needham Band. Um, I posted a video not too long ago of uh, the lighting rig we use with the band uh, in our live show, and I got some requests to make a more in-depth video of kind of what actually is going on in terms of triggering via MIDI. So right now you'll see that I have uh, Ableton Live opened up, as well as a plugin called DMXs right here. That's running on a uh, return track right there. Uh, if I click on that, you'll see the plugin right there, and it pops up. It is a digital lighting board, and as you'll see, um, I have the lights set up via their DMX address. I have um, some uh, color bars, uh, actually some four-bar um, trees that are being run off this. They're um, slaved together, so this one set will change both lights, uh, both trees, and then I have three color strips run off red, green, blue, um, all tethered together, and then I have four strobe slash spotlights uh, set up right here on the bottom, uh, individually controlled. Uh, right now you'll see that it's black because I am on a preset called Blackout. Uh, if I hit white um, you can now see that the lights have turned on. Alright, anyway, I wanted to show you how I trigger lights for individual songs throughout our set. And so in Ableton you'll see that um, I have a song called Freedom Is Here queued up. Uh, right here, this is the backing track we use, the stereo backing track. You can see the audio file there. Uh, right above it I have the cues, which are just vocal cues that tell us where we are in the song as we listen and play along with the metronome. Uh, next you'll see that I have a MIDI track called Bank underneath a MIDI track called Preset um, and then some other things that are used for um, that aren't used for lights. So I'll focus on these. What these are are kind of um, macro and micro presets. Bank is a MIDI note that is going to tell uh, DMX's what song we're on, and preset is going to tell it what part of that song we're on. So if I go to DMXs and I go to our preset manager, you'll see that we have a bank list and we have a preset list. So the MIDI note that is triggered by bank is going to select one of these. So I have all my songs, I have some color sets, but I have songs Refuge, I Am Free, No Love Song, We Are The Free. Um, so we have all the songs that I've done so far. So that MIDI note is going to trigger what song we're going to do. And you'll notice that there's only one, one trigger at the very beginning of the song. Because I'm not changing songs, obviously, in between. So once that MIDI note is selected, uh, it'll jump to the song that we're in. Which in this case is Freedom is Here right there. And then from there on out, we just have presets triggered along the way that will change the lights for the part of the song that we're in. So you'll notice if I zoom in on the bank MIDI clip right here, I have a MIDI note at uh, B2, or B minus uh, 2. The way it works is that the lowest note you can create is the C2 down here. Um, that would be the same as the first preset as this one right here, color sets. So I have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for freedom is here. So I go to the mini clip and I start from the bottom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's where I put the MIDI note to trigger the 12th bank, uh, which will jump here. You'll notice that I have um, kind of a little pre, um, a couple letters before. This is uh, DMXs automatically puts these in alphabetical order. So this is my way of making sure that they always stay in the same spot. Um, if I didn't, after I create a bank, it would jump somewhere else, and then all of a sudden all my presets would be offset, and I would have to kind of start from scratch every time. So this way when I put these little A, 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 B, A, C, these are always going to be in the same order, and as I add on, I just put a little precursor, the next one will be A-N, uh, name of the song. So that way I keep things very organized and they don't jump around because of the alphabetical preset. So, um, 
we have the mini note that triggers freedom is here so when I start the song you'll see that it will jump to this bank freedom is here the twelfth one and then as I when I click on this bank you see that I have these presets for this start drums enter full band verse one drop chorus one and you'll see that um, these are different parts of the song so when you look at my preset um, you'll see all these MIDI clips the first one is at C minus two um, which is the first preset which is going to trigger start you'll see two is at C, uh, C sharp minus two which is going to trigger the drums enter preset and with each of these presets I've set the lights to do a certain thing so right now you'll see that um, if I were to just click on start see the l lights change there and you can see what they're doing uh, blue is kind of jumping around on my um, the trees and so I went once I created that preset I created these I have them doing kind of a square oscillator just a small amount um, and the cool thing about this is that because we're uh, doing it to a click and the tempo of the song is 121 these are actually moving in time with the song um, so when that's triggered when I hit the start of the song you'll see that we'll jump to the twelfth song which is freedom is here because of this bank preset and we'll hit the first preset of the song which I have labeled start which is this right here as we move along when we get to um, where I want the drums to enter I've entered that preset right there and this will jump to drums enter which something else happens um, you can fade into the next preset or you can just cut right to it which is what I do in this song so uh, just to give you a little example I'm going to start at the beginning of the song and you'll watch that as um, just for example sync I'll s start with a blackout and then as soon as I hit enter you'll see it jump to freedom is here because of the bank preset and you'll see it jump to the first preset in Freedom is Here. And as you see these little MIDI clips, you're going to see it jump around uh, based off where I've placed them in the song. So here we go, stop it, and when I play, well, you can watch the lights jump around. Here we go. So this is the intro. Um, the lights are blinking around in time. Four, one, two, three, four. Here Intro. comes, two. here comes a drum. Two and two, three, four. Drums come on. So the drums are kind of doing a drum breakdown here. It's all in time. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Here comes a full band. Band two. One, two, three, four. And now we're at full band. Everything lit up. You'll see that I jump between some hits. Those hits were right on time. Um, that everyone's kind of crashing on. Um, and here comes verse. One, two, three. Verse, two, three, four. Now the verse starts. Verse was four. One, two, three, four. That was the fourth preset. And it'll just stay on that uh, as the song moves along. Coming up is... Coming up is a, um, a drop in which the lights will come down. See this right here? Right back up to full band lights. And so this will move on throughout the whole song. Uh, you see that at each part, you know, tag, chorus, verse, uh, bridge is around here. We have like a down chorus. And I just program lights for each one of those um, places in the song. So I can move through. And uh, for each one, I've just, I'll go through. I'll make a preset, I'll arrange the lights the way I like, um, I'll save it, um, and I put a little precursor, I put these numbers so that I know um, what number uh, MIDI note I need to be on. It saves me some time instead of having to count every time from the top of the list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, it allows me just to go right down and uh, know exactly how much I need to count, because I will jump back and forth, because I don't need to create a new preset for every course. I'm just going to go back to this course every single time we hit the course. Um, 
and all I have to do is go to a previous chorus, copy and paste it to where the next chorus is, and the lights will jump to that. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, please, you know, ask me questions, leave comments, subscribe, whatever you like. And, um, you know, it's actually not, it's a little tedious at first, but once you get the hang of it, uh, what I'll actually do at the end of the song is I'll consolidate the MIDI clip. So once I'm finished with it, Apple J will um, combine it. I then copy that and I go into the arrangement view and I'll just place that whole MIDI clip right in there uh, as well as my bank one in there so that when I hit freedom is here for the entire thing, I'm just by hitting enter, uh, everything is already saved and it will play through that entire MIDI clip. Cool. Well, I hope uh, I hope that helps. And once again, please uh, please write me and ask questions, and I'm happy to help. Uh, this is Andrew Peake again from the Indian Band, and uh, happy lighting. <laughs> Take care.